So a lot of people that go to you are dealing with depression or hardships, and you see reversals there. Randy had a middle-aged man, two young children, whose wife left him, his father abandoned him when he was young, father lives in the area, doesn't want to have a relationship with him. He presents with anxiety, depression, nicotine dependence for three to six months. So how does he find you? It was just like a lucky situation where he, where, where he finds a... Randy, I call him godsidences. Right. He was supposed to come in and see me, whether it was a suggestion from somebody or it was just by pure chance, it, I, I believe it was a godsend. And so we talked on many levels that he is worthy. He is worthy of love, that the unconditional love that we all need is there for us through Jesus Christ, okay. and that we t gave him some breathing techniques, we, we empowered him, you know, nicotine is not a good thing, to, you know, to help when, when you're depressed. It's, it, it actually can worsen your depression. And so we talked about that. We talked about the five pillars that, you know, when he needs to drink more water to get on a regular exercise program, feed the brain through the gut with quality fruits and vegetables. And then that will help us sleep. And, and, but to be loving and forgiving of the things that, have happened to him in his life. Those wounds of the soul that I talk about. Okay. He suffered from all of them. Guilt, grief, abandonment, and abuse. And to be able to be loving and forgiving of himself and others. It's that journey. It's hard work. He did one sertraline, which is Zoloft, an antidepressant. And so I So you do prescribe medications when uh, necessary. Absolutely. Okay. There is a role for medication. I think in this patient it was a perfect role. His his brain's like the battery of our car. It, it didn't have any more juice in it. And so the sertraline could help with those neurotransmitters, the dopamines, the serotonins, and norepine, to help us feel good. And so, but that's a six month, a year or so uh, period of time. But living all the pillars, eating the right foods, the exercise, um, helping our sleep, all that will improve his outlook on life. Now I saw him back a month or so later in follow up, and he wasn't much improved. So we did up his sertraline a little bit because that is something he, he suggested. And it wasn't causing him any side effects. Okay. And so maybe even if it's a placebo effect for him, if he believes it's going to work, then I think it was worth increasing the dose. And so we'll keep following him, keep empowering him, keep showing him love and compassion. And hopefully in time, he'll feel better about himself and see the world a little bit differently. And so... My hope is that in a year or so, we'll be able to wean off this gentleman from his medication and that he does have those healthy, positive uh, experiences in his life through the meditation, through mindfulness, to yoga, that he's empowered and that he can reconcile, you know, hopefully with his father someday and that that will give him some peace and with his, his ex-wife. And so he has two young children to raise. So he, he wants to be fully alive for his children. And so that's our hope, that's our expectation, that's our desire to help him along that journey. You know, as we know, Randy, in life, there's lots of speed bumps. And okay. sometimes you take a step back before you, you, can, you can go forward. And so we'll be there for him to encourage him on that path to healing. And Do wellness. people tell you, like, I've never had a doctor talk to me like this before? I have. And that's, I guess, it, it keeps the fire going in me. Because I know not everybody likes my message. You know, I empower people, but I do it compassionately. And I, I do it by example, because I have them come with me and, and, and do yoga at the gym. You know, we do our uh, smoothies and, you know, uh, down in Guatemala, we did a new happy hour, Feliz Hora. You okay. know, it's happy, happy hour in Spanish. We did, we did raw honey with apple cider vinegar, with tomato juice and cerveza. Okay. It's a pretty good drink. And so I'm not advocating alcohol, but if you're going to have a beer or two, why not put apple cider vinegar, raw and unfiltered, okay. raw honey, and tomato juice. I mean, people drink... Tastes good? Treat, it does. It has like a little sweeter taste. And I got a sweet tooth. Okay. And so, you know, why not? I mean, people drink red beers all the time. And so add apple cider vinegar, uh, raw and unfiltered apple cider vinegar, and some raw honey. Uh, okay. And... We should name that drink, huh? Yes, have a, comp name it. Have a competition. <laughs> have a competition and, and name that drink.